Why don't you point the camera up a little bit? We're live. Howdy. Hi. <laughs> I was just you, reading. You I was like just you're shocked. Well, no, I was reading Cheryl's um, question. She said she saw um, a f top five painting hacks from May 17th. Chris is wearing a shirt with the Bond Girls printed on the front, her favorite sticker. Will those ever be in your shop? They will. Yep, they will. They'll they'll get out there. Hi, John. Thanks for being with us. Hi, Trevor. Thanks for being with us. There was one person that was that, the first that on. Be that logo she's talking about. Yeah. Uh -huh. Ray Martinez was the first person on. So what are you going to give him? We were going to give him an Idaho Painter sticker and a Bond Girls. Paint Life sticker. Cool. Yeah. So Ray Martinez, thanks for go. being with us. And He's we'll the first winner of the night. First winner of the night. Stickers. How much money did you spend shipping off stuff last week? <laughs> quite a bit. Quite a bit. Hi, Mac Miller. So, how? what was the highlight of your week? Um, the highlight? A painting. Um, testing out a new product from Graco that I thought was really cool. So, so where did um, you test it out and what was it? I tested it out in the garage. It was their, um, their pressure roller. And I was very surprised because I bought one probably about five to seven years ago. And I had it in storage for um, like a couple years <laughs> and I never used it and I returned Thanks, it and got Ron. my money back because I just didn't think it would be Wow, worth you never the money. even tried it. I never even tried it. And um, then we got this, we got the jet roller and the pressure roller just recently and I've had them for about three months because I didn't really think that they would work and so... Um, they sat around and I tried the pressure. I tried them both, but I've tried the pressure roller uh -huh. and it was amazing. I, I only so, use it for a day though. So, but that day I used it on Saturday. I worked on Saturday. If you want to see us using it, I was, I did a, um, a live Instagram feed. It's probably gone now, but, um, it was, I totally loved it. The, pre the, um, jet roller, um, not so much. I didn't like breathing the overspray that it was causing. Uh -huh. So I used it shortly and I'm just. I was trying to figure out when would I ever use this thing mm -hmm. and because um, it wasn't going to work for the application we were doing then but the pressure roller I started using it and I was like I think I could use this on almost every single paint job so, so, it so what's exciting. it called or what's the make or model the, or the, the Graco pressure roller and it's Graco so pressure roller. you know it has the gun um, the gun handle right here releases the paint the paint goes up you know through the extension comes out your roller so you never have to dip your roller so you whenever you need paint on your roller you squeeze the trigger it's hooked up to an airless sprayer I had it hooked up to you know a small airless sprayer that's getting really obnoxious yep, Daniel he is on um, he's answering questions so um, yeah it was absolutely amazing and it, it runs at really low pressure. I was, only, I was testing it out and I started really high, got down to, it ran great at only 500 PSI. So I think just any airless sprayer, even the really low end do-it-yourselfers could run this thing. It was amazing. I loved it. So, I so. mean, that's what, you know, our channel is about to educate, equip, and empower painters and introduce them to new products and what will make their jobs more efficient, better finish. And yeah. so... You painted the interior today and you didn't use it. Is there a reason why? Because um, uh, John had already started it and okay. this had um, like three story high ceilings. It was three stories, but like um, two and a half stories okay. high. And that thing it can only reach about 10 feet is the maximum extent of it. Mm -hmm. And I wasn't there when they started the job and John only heard about my experience because he wasn't there with us Saturday. Yeah. He hadn't heard what I had to say about it and stuff. So um, I talked to him about it when I got there and, he, and we talked about, hey, could we have used it here? Mm -hmm. But they already started. So um, we, didn't, we didn't do it. But I probably would have broke it out if I was there when we started the job. So um, we're talking about you testing out the Graco, what's it called again? The Graco Pressure Roller. Graco Pressure yeah. Roller, and that kind of leads me to, um, we're going to be Graco's guest in oh, 23 Galveston, days. Galveston, Texas. Galveston, Texas. Um, we're going to be there February 21st through 23rd at the Paint and Decorating Show, so come down and see us. Um, somebody's saying, Victor Torres said, remember to bring the new machine, I'm going to win. We are giving away two machines on our Facebook page, no, on our website, right? And then we're gonna be giving away some stuff at the show also, we're do you giving, We're giving away a Graco Ultra Max handheld <laughs> um, airless sprayer at the show. We're giving away one on our website right now at theidahopainter.com. 
And but and that's like a six hundred dollar sprayer. But what's amazing is we're giving away the Graco, um, the Graco mm -hmm. Finish Pro nine point five professional model HVLP sprayer, um, which is like an eighteen hundred dollar sprayer, which is kind of, kind of weird because mm -hmm. we have like three times more people entering to win the handheld than we do the other one, which the handheld's like six hundred dollars and the HVLP is. Mm -hmm like $1,800, so it's kind of interesting. So we got two super chatters, Andrew Slovasek. Um, the more that there is of this, the less you, you see, see it. what is it. The more I don't there know. Is Andrew, this, the Andrew likes to see this. us like totally getting <laughs> confused. This chat is dedicated to John's beard. So <laughs> that's well, what Hand has to say today. John does have a pretty good beard. And John Burke, thanks for being with us. Um, definitely our prayers are with you. Life is a gift, and that would be hard. Air? So we're glad you're with us. Maybe it's air. No, that doesn't make any okay, sense. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Kenny, <laughs> thank you so much. We yeah. appreciate that greatly. Hopefully Haley got her shirt. We do. Um, if you didn't know, like you're on YouTube, it's kind of weird because um, we're also really big on Facebook Hi, and um, Instagram, and a lot of people don't know that. There's people yeah. that don't even know on Instagram that we have a YouTube channel. Yeah, it's kind of interesting. But we did a live show out in the field. We do live shows Facebook at noon on Thursday, and we were doing a live show while we were doing our cabinets, and we were showing you the exact process of that we go about doing cabinets how we hang our doors instead of trying to explain it you know um, without having it right there in front of us we were there inside somebody's house doing the cabinets and we showed walked through the whole process so it's kind of cool mm -hmm. it, it was a really big show on Facebook a lot of people watched it so if you want to see it in detail go check us out on Facebook we're gonna be at another cabinet job um, this Thursday yeah and it seems it's like it's really popular I watched yeah. a HGTV show the other day and I could see why they're popular for us. And I'm yeah. sure um, painting cabinets is popular for you because that's just the trend. Everybody wants white cabinets. Everybody wants white cabinets and it's kind of interesting. So, um, and we're getting lots and lots of questions in regards to those, um, on those videos. So that's why we were just on Facebook Live just a little bit ago trying to answer some of the questions. And we're gonna to try to answer some tonight because a lot of people wanna know this process, what we use, why we use it and stuff. Mm -hmm. So we're gonna to try to answer some more questions mm -hmm. on, on that tonight. But check us out on Instagram as Idaho Painter. Facebook is The Idaho Painter. Mm -hmm. And anybody that's here, if you don't subscribe to our YouTube channel, please consider subscribing and hitting the little notification bell. You'll always be notified when we go live just by clicking on that little bell. This all you got to do it's simple but um it's interesting because um only 10 percent of our um viewer views on um youtube come from subscribers mm -hmm. so it's kind of weird that's a weird stat yeah so your hat if anybody likes his hat they're on sale this week this week only hats off is the um coupon code and you get 20 percent off and people are asking how do we how do you find your hat how do you find them? Yeah. Go to go to our website, theidahopainter.com, and go to um, the store, and then it drops down. It'll drop down and go to Paint Life Store. Paint and Life Store. And the Paint Life Store is... Not is, the Amazon store. The Paint Life Store is, is the stuff we sell personally mm -hmm. and ship out, so... And right. what are we selling on it? Something that you we were going to do a giveaway tonight? We're going to give away some um, shield brush holders. So we Thank really you, like Mike. them. Okay, for being with us. Because the paper ones tear, rip, um, get destroyed pretty fast. And shield products came out with this brush holder. It's got perforated holes, so it um, airs out and Doesn't dries out. You. But it keeps the brushes in excellent shape. It's very simple, easy to use. And there are some knockoffs of these, but we like theirs the best, and so we're selling it on our store. Okay. And we're gonna give away some tonight. Yeah, with so, stickers. Shield, the brush holder. And they have three different sizes, so. Any questions you see pop up so, yet? Guan Nelmi 1987, watching from Texas. So make sure um, we're going to be in Galveston, February 21st and 23rd. So come down to the paint and decorating show. Um, we'll be there. Yes. Um, sh let's see. Shout outs from Kennedy House Painting from Savannah, Georgia. Um, Kenneth Thornton. Cool. Well, and Daniel Ward said he wore his Paint Life shirt today, keeping it clean. Cool. So awesome. send us a picture. We love to see you guys in Paint Life gear because it is. It's not just about him being a Paint Life person. It's the community that yep. we're a part of. Justin Triling, have you looked into Graco Pro um, 210ES? 
it's a small pump i think it's fairly new i'm thinking about buying one to spray trim indoors with can't really find much insight on it i haven't used it so um since you brought it up i'll look into seeing if i can get one and test it out mm -hmm. um but so i can't really say anything about it now i just could say overall all the Graco products we have are, um, we really like them. Mm -hmm. They make really good products. So, so and um, make sure, you know, we're talking about cabinets because that's what we're working on right now. But if you do have any um, opinions or thoughts or questions about painting cabinets, this is your chance to ask and um, we'll do our best to try and answer. So, um, Kalito Oliveras, you guys should do a video on tips and needles for the HBLP sprayers. Maybe something in depth. That's a great so, idea. That is a great idea. We are going to be at um, on-site spraying cabinets on Thursday when we do our live show. So, um, John, we'll make a note of that. And mm -hmm. I think that will be something good to talk about because mm -hmm. we have a, a whole kit that has all these different needle sizes and stuff. That could be overwhelming. And, uh, yeah, you could like, when do you use which yeah. ones? And I think we'll talk about that. Yeah, I think we'll bring that whole idea. kit with us. And mm -hmm. um, we only use two, um, but we'll talk about it. And we'll talk about why we use those, mm -hmm. the ones we're using. Because that, that is a question we keep getting people asking, hey, what needle size do you use? So, um, hey, Chris, I have a shirt I want to send. Not all painters wear white here from Rogers, Arkansas. That would be very cool. So um, send us uh, um, or email type us. It. Type it in, John, the email address um, to email um, right here, uh, Uriel Hernandez. So and we'll send you our address. We'll send you our address because we do do shirt swaps. Anybody yeah. here, if you guys have a painter's shirt, your own company, send us a shirt and it'll go up on the wall. And yeah. we'll send you one of ours. Alex um, Bondoli, he says, do you ever use multi-purpose trick ladders like Little Giant? You know, um, I have. I, um, some of them, the ones I have are just to... Um, I don't know. I, I can't say complicated because they're not like complicated, but they don't fit in our in our system stacking ladders in our vehicles and stuff like that. I do use the extend climb, which I think is absolutely amazing. It extends up and extends down into only like three feet high or something like that. I really love that one. Mm -hmm. But um, yeah, I know I know they make the, the those things are made very well and they can come in handy, but um, we don't ever use them. So um, we're here. How are you feeling tonight, Chris? Oh, I'm a little sore. Why are you sore? <laughs> From playing soccer when I shouldn't In, be. I know, me too. He dragged me out to play indoor soccer. Yeah. I was walking funny today. A couple broken ribs and a broken finger and I um, still played. Yeah. And it hurt really bad. Yeah. So. <laughs> but our daughter was really happy. She put the team together and she yeah. like loves us playing soccer with her i don't know why so we're suffering in pain for her yep that's what yeah. we do for the people we love so yeah. i'm going to talk, talk about um you know the painting the cabinet painting process but i want to talk about um I know there were some questions you had talk about what we use to paint cabinets with and why so we use lacquers and they're catalyzed lacquers and you know why do i use lacquers now and i spent you know 12 13 years painting them with um latex paints and i think the, the, the process of painting them with latex paints um you know it takes it's a multiple day process and you know i would lay them down spray the the backs of them one day then i would flip them spray the fronts of them the next day and they would set and dry and then the third day we would come hang them mm -hmm. um the lacquering if you watched our um, facebook live feed we did the full set of the cabinets um four coats in one day and then we reassembled them the next day and we were out of there um about one about noon to one o'clock the second day so it speeds up the process by about um by half doing lacquers versus um versus latex paints but then i also wanted something that's going to be a lot more durable than um latex paints because they're not nearly as washable and scrubbable um with even the best latex paints and more and resistant to chemicals and then the finish we, we would get a, a good finish but i thought we could probably achieve something better with lacquers and so we tried and i think that the finish with lacquers is better feels thicker feels just um smooth um gets a really good high build finish um, automobile quality finish but then they're um, resistant just about everything you'll find underneath your sink and so the, the paint's gonna last a lot longer I, I would say twice the life of the cabinets but you've is, you've learned as you've gone like you've tried all different things like even the HVLP sprayer you just started using that 
Yeah, I mean, well, I didn't oh, just Armando. start using it. We've been using it for a few years now, but um, it's so. No, I mean, just using it sounds like we just started this. No, I'm. I'm just. Ago. No, no, no. That, that's not. We've what been I'm using saying. them for several years. So. Yeah, but I'm yep. saying the um, sprayer you changed from using the airless to the HVLP, but the airless still works, correct? Um. Well, yeah. I mean, it worked for me for 13 years. Yeah. So. Um, it, so if that's what people have. Yeah, you can, you don't have to switch to an HVLP, but if you just want to, I mean, make your product just a little bit better, have mm -hmm. a better finish, and use higher end products, then and then speed up the process. Yeah. The HVLP system is is a really good system. So yeah. I'm not sure if anybody on here has any questions. Yeah. Um, when it comes to, uh, let's oh, see. That's... Um, let's see. Any thoughts on water, um, WB, water pigmented polys or products like ILVA? I haven't used ILVA, but I know like, um, well, the, the pigmented polys, um, you know, I, don't, I just don't have enough experience with them to, um, to really give an opinion on it though. Mm -hmm. um, Phil? Um, Sap, Phil Sap says, I have a cabinet painting and glazing job coming up. My plan of attack is inspired by your process of cleaning using Aqua Coats Lacquer Primer and the Lacquer Pre-Cat Part 1. Cool. That's pretty awesome. So, so you like Aqua Coats also? Um, well, the process of cleaning using Aqua Coat. Oh, well, I mean, I'm isn't, not sure. Isn't that for filling in? The cracks and yeah, stuff I think like that's that. what he's talking about. Is mm -hmm. the um, filling in the grain filler? Yeah, aqua coat grain filler. Yeah, I, I think it's amazing. I think it's the best grain filler. It's the best grain filler that I've ever used. So okay. it's awesome, and I think we're uh, it's so good. We're adding it to our store. Oh it's wow, it's going to be in our store. To yeah, because the things that you know you're selling on tools on Amazon of tools you use and you believe in, and then everything that we're putting on our store are things that you use and believe in. Yep. So we believe in our hat and that's why it's 20% off this week. So um, what is the best way to um, to thin the lacquer for use in a Graco HVLP 9.5 sprayer? So I mean the, the best way, you, you just start it off, some, of, some lacquers, like our lacquer primer surfacer is thin enough, we don't have to thin it out at all. Um, and so we just spray it straight. But when we started spraying um, the top coat, when we very first got it, you know, it wouldn't go through straight. So, you know, we added some lacquer thinner and we kept track of how much we were adding. And so we would eventually know once it started spraying properly, we would know exactly how much we added. And we added 25% lacquer thinner to our lacquer. So we knew now every time we wanted to spray, all we got to do is um, add 25% to our gallon or if we always every time we do a kitchen cabinet job we do three by three gallons and we always have leftover but we mm -hmm. always buy you know too much just to make sure and we just know we get those gallons we thin it by 25 percent but we're ready to go there's no it, it, that's the one thing about using an hvlp is you got to de determine how much you're going to have to thin some but once you do it once it's going to be the same every single time which is nice so, so somebody said with hvlp um louis said do you prefer gravity or bottom feed guns for cabinets? When we're when we're painting cabinets, we like the remote pots. So uh -huh. the remote pot, um, I just hang it like on my pocket or my belt. I think John does the same thing. So in the remote pot holds more product than than the cup itself does. And now uh -huh. you just have your gun, and your gun is attached to two hoses that go to the remote okay. pot, and you can get in in and out of the the cabinets a lot easier. And the remote pot, you don't have to fill it nearly as much. So uh -huh. I think it's a two two quart remote pots so it, um or two and a half quarts i believe it's right right in there um oh you just oh i had one to read um, i lost it i lost it we're, you, we we have to answer questions on, <laughs> i know on, that's before what... let's see man the feed is like going crazy do you um, spray lockers while homeowners are home or do you ask them to vacate for the day so that's a good question that was the one i was looking for yeah so um that's a good question because lockers you know two do, great minds uh, <laughs> <laughs> lacquers um you'll obviously have a strong odor yeah. there's no way they're going to be inside the booth but what on thursday 
it's interesting. You got to go check out our video on Facebook while okay. we were there live because we, we were almost set up with the booths. We weren't quite finished, but you can see how we created our spray booth inside yeah. of somebody's home. And then usually it, there's a booth within a booth that's ventilated to the outside. But because the customer wanted to be able to walk through the house, oh, we gosh. had to create it. We had to create like a hallway for them to walk through. <laughs> so it was kind of um, Zach wasn't so they happy. so they were there. The, um, literally. Literally, the customer, we were spraying in the kitchen, and there was um, plastic um, film going over the, the entryway to his office, and he was sitting right on his desk, right behind the plastic, working from home on and his computer. And he didn't complain about Never dust complained or about, smell or anything? Well, there's not going to be any dust because it's completely tented off plastic, uh -huh. but it, does any of the, um, the smell seep through there? You know, <laughs> when I walked into... Um, the dogs are going nuts. They won in the room. Um, <laughs> so it happens crazy. when you have four dogs. So, um, yeah, when I walked in the house, I can smell like a mm -hmm. very slight smell of lacquer, but mm -hmm. it wasn't like overwhelming. It's it's probably no different than rolling walls. It's just a different smell. It wasn't going to harm the customer. But I kind of tell customers it's personal preference. I mean, some people do not want to smell anything, and so they should be out of the house. But other people, like this customer. I always tell the people that they don't have to leave the house mm -hmm. if they feel like if the smell bothers them. They're, they're free to leave, but if they if they have to work from home or be in home, they're, they're, they can't come in the kitchen. They can't come in our booths because, I mean, you can't even be in the booth without, you know, um, charcoal respirators. So, or you would be choking to death. So, so Nelson, oh, Brother Painting, oh, stop. Oh, you just lost it. Nelson Brothers Painting, do you think that lacquer just sits on the surface and does not penetrate like paint? See, seems like lacquer chips easier and has no flexibility like latex paint. So good question. Uh -huh. So um, latex paint is flexible and lacquer is not. Lacquer will, will like break, it'll crack, but um, there's give and take on some of them. So lacquer doesn't sit on the surface because what usually what we're running into 99% of the time, the cabinets are all, they're lacquered. They're, what everybody wants is white, um, white cabinets now mm -hmm. and right now all their cabinets are like they're stained alder with oak. a lacquer clear coat or oak um mm -hmm. golden oak with a lacquer clear coat or I and mean, that's the two most common and they're lacquer mm -hmm. and so what we're doing the, our first two coats our first coat is um a lacquer primer surfacer so if you put it on heavy enough the lacquer melts to the previous coat so they become one coat and so they bond really really well mm -hmm. and then the next coat melts to that one the next coat melts to that one so ideally it's melted and become you know one if you spray it too thin it doesn't have enough time to you know melt into it and and attach very well but um now if you're spraying a lacquer over um, a latex paint there's a few things you got to be careful with but we've done that before and the lacquer bites to the latex paint very well now a cabinet like cabinet it's doors um you out not less is why lacquers you you don't want them outside because um the lacquers we use because things that expand and contract like wooden doors and stuff like that there's a lot of movement the lacquer is going to um, crack and break um, but inside there's not a lot of movement in your cabinets they're they're extremely hard they're completely coated so there's no moisture getting out in and out of them so they're not you know changing and moving so we don't ever have a problem with the lacquer cracking so so for you most of the jobs we're doing are they are cabinets that have been in people's houses for a long period of time and they just want white because that's what's in style and fashionable now. And so they're in a house which is a controlled temperature. So if you were like taking them out into the garage and moving them different temperatures, that wouldn't be a smart thing to do. Yeah, if you're, I mean, if your cabinets, like if there's a floating panel um, that's not like it's really tight, but you take and you put those cabinets like into a garage uh -huh. that has um, extreme temperature um, changes, um, if any of the lacquer bridges, and we just saw this with the cabinets we were at today, that we didn't paint the kitchen cabinets, somebody else did, mm -hmm. and they didn't caulk the floating panels, and they sprayed enough lacquer on it that it bridged the gap of the floating panels, uh -huh. and all those gaps cracked. And so now she um, is not happy with it, and I can understand why. And this gets to um, the question of why we you know, caulk Hawk. the floating panels. And some people didn't like that you do that. Um, yeah, there's quite a few people that didn't like it, and it's very yeah. controversial. 
But um, in my opinion, if those, and this is just my opinion, if those floating panels would have been caulked, they would have never cracked. Can and you take a picture properly. of them tomorrow? Um, I can. I yeah. can take a picture of them. And, and say, this is why we caulk. And this is why we <laughs> caulk. And, so um, that this doesn't happen to us. Yeah, because now if, now if that the caulking would have bridged that gap, there, um, the caulking wouldn't necessarily move and um but underneath in the crack in the gap it might have stretched but i more than likely it wouldn't have um broken the lacquer uh -huh. on top of the caulking and so uh -huh. um it was kind of an interesting situation but you know people kept you know getting you know jumping down on us saying that you know we just screwed up the cabinets by caulking them because now they're going to crack yet this guy didn't caulk them and he's um, he does two sets of kitchens every week. I mean, he's booked for months and months. Uh -huh. It's a cabinet company that that's all they do. And they so did not So this was recently it. that she had it done? Yeah, she just had it done this year. Oh. They were done um, less than a year ago, or right around a year. Oh. And they're all cracked. And so um, mm. that's, you know, it's one of those things. That's, that's the big debate is... Um, you know, caulking your panels or not caulking your panels. And, yeah. and so he's being called back. We've been painting cabinets for quite a while and caulking the panels and even ours in our own house are caulked. Yeah. And there's no cracks. Yeah. And our cabinets were the exact same as her Naughty cabinets. Naughty Alder. Naughty Alder mm -hmm. um, with the same type of floating panels. Wow. So wow. there you go. Okay. Um, wow. That was a long topic. That, that was um, a long topic. Let's see, um, Nicole, don't charge for more different texture. Does the remote pot need a compressor to work? Um, so the remote pot is basically, it's just, a, instead of the, the cup on your gun, now you're just removing the cup from your gun. You're using a remote pot. You're running your hoses, the two hoses, to the remote pot. And then out of the remote pot, those hoses will run to, like, your HVLP um, sprayer, um, Turbine. We use the the cap spray Titan cap spray 115 turbine, and we also use um, Graco's Finish Pro 9.5 so. turbine, and that's that's one we're giving one of those away on our website theidahopainter.com. So if you want to win a brand new one, go yeah. to our website the Idaho Painter and enter to win one. So, um, but it, yeah, it's it, we don't use a compressor. You can there are people you you can use an air compressor that has enough volume to run your air. Okay. but we use turbines and turbines are really small mm -hmm. lightweight and um, they're specifically designed to um, spray with um, air to sprayers so our full setup is a turbine unit so we so. have a couple super chowders tonight hey we got Andrew Slovasek so he um, we hey, still don't know everybody somebody's got to answer this riddle the Somebody. more that there oh, is of this see it. the less you see what is it the more that there is of this, this the less you see. John's what beer. is this? I have no idea. <laughs> Paint? The more the more there is of this, the less you see of it. No idea. But Kenny Sanders, thank you so much. Kenny we Sanders, super chatter. That. And, and got, Armando brought up that I was the best player on the soccer team, but that is not that's true. That's true. I think that I'm, is not I'm, true. I'm agreeing with Armando. No. So, I, I um, couldn't walk. I sacrificed my legs, but let's give away some we're stickers. Here. Um, you need to just pick. How about um, um, the, you, you gave away two. I gave, so away, gave away two, two more to so whoever um, you want. Ray Martinez. So John, if you could make sure and put Ray Martinez to. You can give one to that guy. We just his, answered his question from that just went. Send me. his. Who was that? It was Nelson Brothers painting. Nelson Brothers painting. Bam! We just answered you a question, and you're going to give you two stickers. We'll give you two stickers, and you need to email us at live show at the dash Idaho dash painter. Dot com so, and so somebody send asked, us your address. Send us your address. So somebody asked, I mean, we do make, I, I've made a t-shirt like this in the past, but it's not for sale now. It but will be in the, um, future. in the future on our store where our, um, this is another one of our shirts that's for sale. Our very own logo that we created, Paint Life. And turn around, so, what's the back say? It's different on the back. It says it's got hashtag Paint Life. So kind of cool. And that's, that's what we're about. That's available on, on our store. We're mm -hmm. here to educate empower and equip we're here so, for you guys yeah our so. purpose is to just um i mean give you the all the information that we know how that we've become successful and it's not necessarily the best way the only way the right way but it's way. what you've learned and but what works for you it's what it's learned what it's worked for us and because we really truly want to help you guys succeed become um better painters and um just love your job enjoy your job 
and go to work with a smile on your face. I mean, that's what's cool to me. But the um, thing is, is we need you guys. We need your interaction because Chris has learned about stuff that if we didn't do this show, we wouldn't know. Why do we need people to help us interact? How many, how many comments did we get on Facebook on Sunday? 1100 and something 1125 comments that we answered on sunday on youtube yeah so 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 we are we value every comment that you put out there and it's our goal to try and keep up with it but um that's what this community is about so what's the best way to thin lacquer for use in hvlp i so that was um bob miller i answered that question um Let's see. Can my... I spray ca- cabinets with the sprayer 595 with the smaller dustless tip? So um, that's my angels painting. Lopez says, "Can it's I spray? So can I spray cabinets with that's and the 595 is a Graco. The Graco 595. That's what I was running the power roller with this uh-huh. weekend. So it's um it's a smaller airless sprayer, um, airless unit, but it's actually a very powerful unit. Mm-hmm. It's not the smallest. They even have like a 495, a 395, and then units less than that. Mm-hmm. That 595 will paint any cabinets you need to use um, or, or paint. And I, I sprayed cabinets for years and years with a Titan 440. I, which is way smaller than the 595. Mm-hmm. And I just used um, the majority of time 510 and 310 tips. Now, What's um, a dustless tip? I've never heard of that. It, it's it's the, the, the low overspray tips. Okay. So the, the FFLP tips, the fine uh-huh. finish low pressure tips. They, they um, it's interesting because those new tips that came out, even though they're finer finish, mm-hmm. um, they, um, they they don't give as good of a finish as their older tips are doing away with the the fine finish tips Mm -hmm. so um you know but absolutely you can do it i mean i did it for years i painted a lot of cabinets with an airless sprayer and water-based latex paint so i used to use um incredicoat from sure williams i sprayed them with you um, liked incredicoat didn't you it was awesome they got rid of it why they get rid of a good product? The caustic, nasty chemicals in it that make oh, it good. Somebody it had a question. I missed it, but they were saying um, you know, California. Hernandez gave a twenty dollars super chat. Big shout out to Mr. Hernandez. Thank you so, cool. so much. We appreciate that greatly. But somebody asked about you know they're doing away with oil based products in California. Is that a bad thing or a good thing? Well, they're they're not. I mean, I guess um, they're not necessarily doing away with them. They're coming out with oil oil modified mm-hmm. um, um, products, so that they have them here. So Pro Classic is one of them. They used to have oil based Pro Classic, and now it's oil modified, so it cleans up with water, um, and it, it is really good. It works really well, hmm. and. Um, in, I think he's talking about like the standards, like the clean air environmental that they're, you know, starting. I mean, but the water-based the, products are. I mean, what they're doing, what the, the the EPA regulations are forcing those products out of um out of the market, mm-hmm. out of the paint stores because of the no VOC standards. So mm-hmm. you have to have paints have to be no VOCs, volatile volatile organic compounds, you know, coming off of them and mm-hmm. oil based products and lacquer based products and stuff. And a lot of these products, you know, are um you know have high VOCs and so now they've got to change them so they have no VOCs so it's making them mm-hmm. go away. So yeah, which is a good thing because I can't stand working with oil-based products. Yeah, so um, it's a good thing all the way around. Tony McClure says Galveston is a great place to spend the day. Not as nice as Cali, but not too shabby. Good. We're really excited to yep. be there. So February 21st through 23rd, come down and see us. So um, Stephen G, why do you never use a AAA or Binks pressure pot? Um, Never heard of them. That's a good. Well, I've heard of them, and Binks makes really, really good stuff, but. Um, I guess it's everything that's in our local paint stores, okay. it's not those brands. Okay. So if I wanted to use those brands, I guess I'd have to go outside of the paint stores yeah. and search them out. But it's um, the brands that we use are so readily available. And um, the, the, you know what was really weird is the only reason we got into painting cabinets um, or what, what helped the process of getting us into painting cabinets with an HVLP sprayer is um, all these videos I do of Titan Titan sprayers cleaning them up. I think Titan never paid me a dime for any of it. And they just wanted to say thank you one day for making these videos. And they said, yo, can we send you an HVLP sprayer? And I told them, well, I've never 
even used one, and I don't really necessarily think I need one. Yeah. But he's like, I'll send you one anyway. So he sent it to me, and it said literally, I think it sat around for a year at least, <laughs> and then. I asked John, do you want to figure out how to use this thing? And John took it, I think he took it home to do some projects at home and he went and learned how to use it. And there you have it. Now that's what we're doing. Yeah. Thanks, so look thanks at, John. Look at Third Coast. <laughs> thanks for working. changing my life and making it more complicated. <laughs> no, but it's it's helping us. Um, hey, John, and, John Allen's watching. Oh. Hey, John Allen, hope your calf is feeling better. Yeah, my sister... I was just getting ready to go up there and just just throw the hammer down on he the can. ski slope with them. My sister you just know. came up from California and her husband, his first run down. Because I can um, calf. snowboard circles around John. Not and, with broken um, ribs and broken and finger. <laughs> I, it was going to be fun, but now I can't because now he's wounded on the couch. Yep. We'll hang out with him on the he's couch. He's resorted to watching our show. Yeah. I mean, really? I know. He's really lowering the standards. <laughs> so look at Third Coast Woodworking. Third, third Coast Woodworking and Paint just gave a super chat. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I appreciate your video so much. Look forward to more. So I'm kind of third. I wonder where he's from. Third Coast Woodworking We're really and Paint. low on the thing. There's a lot more. Uh, we're not that low. I, you just lost the red one. I think it was. There, there we go. There you go. Third Coast. Um, splash Painting Robbie Andrew. That's the key to um, too much, um, not too much Dawn Soap. So he's somebody's answering questions there. Um, let's see any other um, third coast woodworking and paint we'll get the big one in is uh, Andrew is replying to him see um, I don't use it much but let's see my van was painted with a water-based paint hey so th that's interesting so Marty um, one he says his van was painted with a water-based paint so I mean I, I would assume like a water-based house paint uh -huh. when when the Incredico coat came out um, it, which is the trim paint we would spray on trim a painter painted it that I know you painted his whole car with Incredico uh -huh. and it looked amazing and years later it still looked amazing and it's an interior house trim paint it's crazy yeah so Layla Jonathan I love your videos they inspire me in high school and I'm taking advanced carpentry and your videos help me a lot thank you so much well thank Lalo you Layla Jonathan so much for being with us and thank you very Layla, much. we want to send you some stickers stickers there you go so you need to email us your address um John will put in the type, email address type in the address address to uh, Mr. Jonathan and yes live show at the dash Idaho dash painter.com yeah pretty simple Jenny, so. I hope you're doing well and your family yeah yeah. Um, so, bam. So we're still trying to do questions. Yeah, the, the questions are rolling <laughs> in. Um, just a, a quick plug again, just to make sure Julio's you guys. Julio's here. Morales Drywall. Thanks for being with us. Just so, uh, so the Morales Drywall. Uh, let me see oh. if you guys can see oh, it. Oh yeah, because we opened it. So he he um yeah he gave us a shirt our last live show. Yeah. We opened it up and there it is. So if you have it if you if you have a shirt. I think and I you need want to mail to him a shirt. On our wall, you haven't mailed a shirt yet. No, Julio, you need to send me your address to live show at the dash Idaho dash painter dot com, and I'll send you a shirt and tell me what size you would like. Because we love to do swaps. We love to. If you got stickers, send us a sticker. We'll send you a sticker. Yeah. If you have a shirt, send us a shirt. We'll send you a shirt. If you have a hat, send us a hat. We'll send you a hat. Mm -hmm. And um, the one hat we have, um, it was um, writer painting sent us a hat and it said make painters great it's a super cool hat i really it is like very, it very very yeah. cool so aaron g says varnished cabinets need to be sanded in order to prime is that true well it all depends on what you're priming it with so okay. um that's a good question if um i was painting you know varnished cabinets um if i was um lacquering them you know uh we, we wouldn't sand them. What we do is we do our process. We wash them down, mm -hmm. clean them with Dawn um, dish soap, mm -hmm. you know, which is uh, the best, I think the best cleaner you can use. We have used um, also like denatured alcohol, but you know, Dawn dish soap, um, scrub them down really good. And then we would spray, you know, a lacquer, um, lacquer undercoater over it, which is our high build primer surfacer on it and that's going to bond to the varnish but you if you're painting them with like latex paints I, if i was going over a varnish i wouldn't sand them but i would spray them with um bonding primer like xim makes an amazing bonding primer that i that i actually 
etch itself and um, stick to glass. It's gonna etch itself and stick to um, a varnish and you're not gonna need to sand them. Um, you know, is sanding bad to do? No, you sanding is, you know, scuffing the surface, giving it a profile, something rough for your product to bite to, but um, there are primers that are designed to bar bite to hard, smooth surfaces like that, like okay. XIM's bonding primer. So, um, but you know, you can never go wrong by sanding, but just sanding creates a lot of dust and mm -hmm. stuff that you're gonna have to remove and get rid of that dust, so. Mm -hmm. XC Painters says Kelly Moore makes a great hybrid for trim and cabinets, I hear. Oh. Well, if you know what the product is, let us know. Because that's what we want to do. We want to try different products. Have you tried anything new lately? Um, any products? So we, Yeah. Yeah. So today, you know, that, that's what we're all about is testing out new things. That's yeah. why I'm testing out that pressure roller from Graco. I mean, absolutely amazing. But here I, I'm saying that I love the thing, but you, you can't, I mean, don't go out and buy it right now <laughs> because um, I'm saying I really love it, but I've only tested yeah. it for one day, mm -hmm. one garage. Um, now that I do love it, it went into the van and now we're gonna begin testing it. Okay. And so I'm gonna begin the testing process of it and then if it becomes, because I'm already thinking I might have them in each van okay. and have an airless fair set up specifically for it because on my live show that I did um, Saturday, I'm gonna do, I'm doing a video reviewing it too, how easy it comes apart and how easy it is to store and stuff. But if I, you know, if I'm gonna end up keeping them in our vans, then we're gonna sell them in our store, hopefully. Okay. So, um, so but, but how about the paint you used today? Um, today we tested out a product from Benjamin Moore, mm -hmm. and because um, we like to test out new stuff, and the customer and, wanted it, and the customer, um, well, the customer didn't necessarily want the product we're using. Okay. They had a specific color, which is a Benjamin Moore color, and they had a specific finish they wanted, which was the matte finish, and the matte finish from Benjamin Moore. Okay. And so now, sure, Williams has matte finishes, but is sure Williams matte finish the same as Benjamin Moore's matte finish? I didn't want to take the risk of putting it on the wall, mm -hmm. um, something from sure Williams, and her go, well, that's not the finish I was expecting, because mm -hmm. then that could I would have to cut repaint it and then she was very particular about her colors and it had to be like dead on and are they gonna be able to match it sure yeah. Williams always has a, a hard time matching Benjamin Moore colors off of some of their fan decks like their Aurora line and stuff but um, so I didn't want to take that risk either so I just was okay I'm just gonna go buy Benjamin Moore paint and great opportunity to test a new product yeah. and it doesn't um, because it's a matte finish I only had two options in the Benjamin Moore line here in Idaho I had and what were they Regal and Aurora okay and so in the Aurora is the very top of the line okay. Regal's right now how right expensive down. is Aurora so yeah because how expensive is Regal <laughs> and it's so, interior um, right yeah it's interior I don't know how expensive the Aurora was but I probably might have had a heart attack if I would have <laughs> <laughs> if I would have found out because I, I had mm -hmm. all, like a, a grand mal seizure just about when I heard how much I paid for the Regal. And so I gave it, um, I used it today. And once again, I've only used it for a day. I've used it in the past yeah. um, a couple other times, but not in, keep in mind, hey, I'm testing this stuff yeah. out and want to give it a review. But I, I rated it from, you know, a three star to, you know, maybe three and a half stars and why. So why in some... So you did that on Instagram. So if people don't know about your Instagram channel. Well, I, I mean, I posted a, I posted um, us using it, uh -huh. a video, and then what I rated it, and then there was some people, people were a lot like, of questions. Well, why? Yeah. Why did you give it only three stars? Because we think it's great. And so I knocked it down because um, part of what my star rating is is value. Okay. And so to me, that's important. That I mean, I mean, a, a paint can't be a five star paint if it's um, you know a hundred dollars a gallon. I mean, yeah. I mean, there has to be value equated in there somewhere. And so, is this a good value? for what it is. And so okay. it, um, for a good paint, it should be, you know, be a good value too. But it, it was my, I paid, let's be honest and open here. I paid 47.70 a gallon <laughs> for the this tax. stuff. Yeah. So 47.70. And then like, yeah. That I, was your contractor's discount. That was my discount. Because he's, yeah. <laughs> so my, 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 so I knocked it down one star because I just thought it was just extremely expensive. Yeah. Who can afford this? I mean, really, I mean, any do-it-yourself for going in there, can you really afford to pay $50 a gallon? But get this, the do-it-yourselfer only pays $2 more than me. I was getting a whopping $2 discount because I'm yeah. a contractor. Well, and contractors should get a lot better deals because of the volume. 
Um, in a relationship. I mean, vo- volume is. I, I think, and this is my opinion. Whether I spend a hundred thousand um, dollars a year on paint versus somebody else that spends um, ten thousand dollars a year on a paint. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, everybody should get a really de- a good discount if you're a contractor. Okay. And it, it should start. It should start more than two dollars. Yeah. And, um. Two. I mean. I mean, why even give me a discount? I mean, what's the two dollars? I mean, I mean, I couldn't even. Couple percentage. Yeah, I couldn't buy. Couldn't even buy a bag of bagels. With, so um, what I say. So and, so you tried out Regal today, and the big thing is is customer service. Um, we want to accommodate our customers and give them what they're looking for within reason. I mean, if they tell us to use a really horrible product, we may say no, or if they may tell us to apply it a certain way, we may say no. Um, but it's customer service and you bought it and you gave it a three, three and a half stars. One was because of the value price and what else? Um, the other, the other thing, um, so let's say what I do like, what I like about it, because okay. we don't want to just bash Benjamin Moore because Benjamin Moore makes really Great good products. products. Yeah. Um, I really like a lot of their stuff mm-hmm. and, um, and their fan deck is, is the best fan deck like the on colors. the market by far. Their colors. And so they do fabulous job. Um, but the, um, so it covered really, really good. Okay. So coverage is great. Um, it covered really good. Um, and what else? Now I forget. My mind just went blank. So um, it covered good. Did it splatter? Um, well. Did it drip? It covered really good. It dried really fast, which okay. I like. But then, to a certain extent, it dried too fast. Okay. So you can two coat it really fast, but then, um, then, but then has it was drying a little bit too fast in some situations for me. So there was a little bit of give and take there, but it cut in awesome. That was okay. the other thing. So it covered really, really well and cut in really awesome because because it was. I mean, the consistency, like the viscosity of it, it was really nice. Like cutting in, cutting in smooth. It covered like my cut ins mm-hmm. were done in one coat. Um, and I think like John's, we probably had a triple coat on and stuff because I mean, I just got more skill. Doing like just kidding. <laughs> so <laughs> but you. But anyways, um, it cut it cut in awesome because of the butt, but because of how thin it was, mm-hmm. um, the viscosity and um, even though it covered well, cut in good, it dripped really bad. So I when I was cutting in, I was able to cut in fast, and I would go like this and cut in, and paint was flicking off the brush, and I noticed it was like there was yeah. drips, and then Zach was up three stories, and you know, and I was like on my ear, or something a little different on my ear in there. And so, so is this the little drip paint? Um, that's not, um, no, that's no, not. No, that's something else. No, that's, that's from today. Oh. That's the paint from today. That, that splattered. Yeah. That, I dropped my brush off the ladder, hit the floor, and it splattered up on me. That, that was, was a professional. This what happens when you get old. <laughs> I mean, you start to get old, and then you just start, you, your brushes just fly out of your hands, because you're, um, you can't feel them anymore. You got arthritis and all these kind of things, and, so, and. So, you know, when you're talking about, you know, cutting it in and doing it in one coat, you released a video a couple days I ago, and, and what was it about? It's getting a lot of views. Um, yeah. How to paint a room in one coat. Yeah, and so um, anything you want to tell people about that? Go watch it. <laughs> if you want to know how to roll the wall in one coat, what we're doing is I'm showing you um, in a room, you know, how we would go about painting a room within the best odds of covering it in one coat. Okay. Now, in that scenario, we were doing that, and. And um, after we were all said and done, when it dried, we had to go do another coat. Oh, so you need to make a part two of that video. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's, I mean, you can't. Because it depends on the colors. It, it all depends on the colors. It depends on the color of the wall now and the color that's going over the top of it. And okay. I mean, it, I would say 90% of do-it-yourselfers and probably 50% of professional painters would have said it's fine. Uh-huh. It would have been it would have been one coat. Okay. But if I got up really, really close to it, got like this close mm-hmm. to the wall and looked at it, I look at it really close, I can see some specs every now and then, and so it didn't meet my standards, and so I was like, we need to recoat it. Do you guys use and halogen lights? I think I saw something new. We do. Um, we and hang um, LED lights. LED lights. And they, they're the um, the Milwaukee Rovers. So a- absolutely amazing. If any of you guys do that, also, and so the reason you do that is to really inspect the wall. Yeah, it, you can see a lot better what you're doing, especially okay. doing spraying cabinets. Um, when you're spraying trim, you can see so much better with that LED light. So is that kind and of something standard that you guys do? 
Um, or is it just in certain conditions or situations? I mean, we don't always have them on us, mm -hmm. but when um, John always has it on him when he's spraying, like trim and cabinets and stuff, he has it on him all the time. That's something so, that we should maybe have in our store. It is. It's an absolutely amazing little light. Mm -hmm. It's like $80. Uh -huh. So, um, But it's it's well worth the money. They're amazing. Okay. So um, it's how we determine on walls and stuff like that. When we were, we did a video on how to do a patch on a level five finish. Okay. And you would put the light on the wall and shine it up the wall and you can see any of the imperfections you needed to sand out. So it's kind of cool. It's the Milwaukee Rover. Okay. Yeah. Okay. That's yeah, kind of cool. A, a good suggestion. We're really behind on questions. Really? Look at Julio. Um, so Morales painting and drywaller, another super chatter. Thank you very much. Uh, hopefully, I think we're going to see him in Texas. Yeah, and hopefully be, we'll see more of you guys in um, Texas. Make sure you come to Galveston, Texas mm -hmm. in the booth. Um, Paint Wife is going to be there. And so is Journeyman John. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to be there. And then McKenna, mm -hmm. um, our social media manager. Yeah. Which is, it just so happens Thank that she is our daughter. Yeah. So our male so daughters. It just so happens. Just so happens. So that she's going to, so all four of us are going to be in the Graco booth. Hanging out. I wonder with Rico, if my, so. my our little one in college ever comes on the show. So you are here often. Um, Hi, Bobby Willis says shellac not working on knots. Anybody? Um, I'm not sure if he asked before. Let's see uh, um, if he asked a question. So shellac, because um, on on knots, you know, I've had a really good su success with shellac primers and shellacking stuff to stop bleeding mm -hmm. and stuff like that. And and I've used shellac, um, this, this bomb cans of shellac, um, white pigmented primer to go over knots and it stopped the bleeding and it was a good primer. So I'm not sure um, the question's not very specific and I don't see it, Bobby Willis, if he asked oh, earlier. I was just gonna try Bobby and read Bobby Willis something. says, hi, John. Um, so I didn't see any there. Let's go ahead um, if you need to scroll well, up. I... XC Brian Mowers, X, XC Brighton MI, has a Benjamin Moore dealer, never tried their paints, have to check them out. Um, Kenny Sanders, you can not go over. Let's see, would love to see you in Texas. So. Mojai, 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 Mojai. Um, some of these people, let's see, interesting renovations. Chem Aqua, so another person's bringing up Chem Aqua. Chem Aqua coat, so. Um, you know, I can't, you know, speak to it. I, I used it a couple times in the past when I wasn't really thinking about evaluating the product. I just put it on, but I know a lot of people like it and like it a lot. So, um, I think we need to go buy some and test it out with the, with the whole John and I with the, you know, in mind of testing it and evaluating it, see, um, you know, whether we'd use it or something or whether we'd recommend it. Home improvement how to's. I that's just us. stick with that's the... No, right here. Oh. Stick with the two coats when um, when that's the begin. Since yeah, I can paint sense. faster or with lesser each coat, I am covered or even but not kicked on. See, Cody Townsend, you quoted one yesterday and would have to ventilate it through the master bedroom. Not sure what I'd do. Um, I think he's probably talking. Or cabinets. He might be talking to John ventilation. Uh -huh. So we'll talk about ventilation. So you know, we're we're always the cabinets. We always spray them and at the customer's house. We do mm -hmm. the doors, the whole thing at the customer's house. And so we set up a spray booth, then create a booth around that. Do we have any videos and showing the spray booth? We do. So we have, um, we, we did our Facebook Live on yeah. Thursday, walking you through the spray booth and how we were setting it up. Is that still on Facebook? It is. So just scroll down so Facebook please. a little bit, click that video and you can watch that video and you can see the spray booth. And then you can, we, we had to ventilate it through a door, which I don't like. The, we opened the door, set the fan there. What we, what I like, like to see windows. is we open like a window that, that slides up or slides to the side and we set the fan in the window, mm -hmm. pull out the window screen, then we mask around it. And so it sucks because you want to create the suction of mm -hmm. sucking everything out. And so it keeps the, the spray booth from like fogging up mm -hmm. and getting um just just t intoxicated with you know lacquer because it gets when um without the ventilation you walk in there and it burns the heck out of your eyes and stuff but you hook up the ventilation system and bam you can walk in there i can walk in there without a mask and it doesn't really bother me so when but. you like for our warranty for exteriors you talk about mill thickness and so some people could put the paint on you know two thin coats and be less paint than one thick coat and so a lot of people are saying there's no such thing as a paint that covers in one coat that's not necessarily true because it depends on the product and how much you put on and the color right yeah so I, yeah i mean I, I guess um you know 
um, that's kind of like, you know, um, you can argue the point. Yeah. Is, is there such thing? Yeah, I think, you know, you, you go, we always, I always walk in to the job in mind thinking I'm going to do two coats. Yeah. But if the walls were um, like a flat white and I'm doing them a satin divine white, if you roll it properly, you can get it on in one coat. That's yeah. like a really ideal scenario. That's like you know your primer coat and then your top coat. And so, but there are situations you can do it in one coat. Mm -hmm. If you're spraying it, you can spray it in one coat. Mm -hmm. You know, if you um, have the right scenario. So there is a possibility. But I mean, I don't ever walk into the job thinking like every job I'm going to try to do this in one coat and save well, money and walk out. We always buy enough paint for two coats. But if I mean, if the scenario was all right and I get up close to the wall and I'll usually get this close to mm -hmm. the wall and I'll look at it and I'll look for like um, pinholes or specks like like naps where the nap was touching it on peaks and valleys and stuff. Mm -hmm. And on the peaks, if it's not covered, we're going to we're going to put on another coat. Yeah. So, um, so but so I don't know. I mean, you can't you can't never say it'll never cover yeah in one coat. well and i i just think that's the thing is somebody may be putting it on really light and two coats isn't enough yeah i mean so it depends on the person that's applying it yep. and their skill because when i was watching that video you were putting a lot of paint on that nap that would be horrible for me to do because i'd have paint everywhere yeah i mean ceiling so donald um on here says i use a flat paint for my ceilings one coat try it so um he's saying the the product one coat um, we use flat on our ceilings too, a product from Sherwin Williams called Eminence. Uh -huh. And um, I'd say 50% of the time you got to do two coats. Yeah. But there are times you can um, put it on one coat. And who wants to sit here and do this, you know, twice? Um, yeah. If you can do it in one coat, you can spray Eminence in one coat easily um, on ceilings. Not a problem. If mm -hmm. you're rolling it, you, um, you at least 50, but I'd say 75% of the time you're probably going to have to two coat it. But it all depends on. Um, what sheen is on there first and then the color mm -hmm. if it's a flat paint you're going over it's going to more than likely um, you're going to have a better chance of it covering in one coat so people were talking about the pro industrial line and he said can you guys test the pro industrial line urethane and epoxy so um i've used the pro industrial line the epoxy yeah i love it you love it it's a great product and i've used the urethane too the pro industrial line has some really really good products but there's one I really, really hate. <laughs> but we Which use one? Um, Which one do you not the, like? the Pro Industrial um, Multi Surface Acrylic is really, really good for like outside on wrought iron fences and stuff. Okay. And we used it like on a car wash and stuff like that. But the um, the um, the multi there's the multi surface and then there's the the other one that has like a similar name multi surface. Now it just slipped my mind. Mm -hmm. um, multi all purpose I think it's all purpose acrylic I think mm -hmm. is there's like the multi-surface and I think the all purpose the other one it's what this desk right here is painted with oh. I would never ever use it I again. just I think this desk you call it what's it called um like oh antique or rustic or I don't know they just need to get rid is of it? that one and then just eliminate <laughs> that product because it was it's not a good product mm -hmm. um I wish I could remember it to type it in here so you'd know exactly. Yeah. But, um, they, they have the same name. So like when I went in and ordered the multi-surface, they accidentally gave me the other name because the name was so similar. And I came here yeah. and did this with it. And I'm like, that's not the same stuff because it's not yeah. it's not acting the same. It's not doing And it still peels off this desk. Mm -hmm. So even after I primed it. So um, so um, Rick Gonzalez wants to know when we're going on tour. Oh, well, we our first state of events is... Um, going to Australia no we will talk about that later we are going to Galveston Texas so and we are working but what we happened can go today? to Australia if we want yes we can go to Australia you want. but where what are we working on that was exciting today um, what were we working on that was exciting concrete oh word so we Yay. so we got the footings and the foundation oh, um, done the so flat exciting. work done on our um, building for our Paint Life Academy. Yeah, so, so we're slowly, it's, slowly. It's coming soon. Our well, own hopefully. academy right here on our property. Yeah, our this is gonna be property. this is gonna be the temporary site because we're gonna build a, yeah. another place. But you got to start somewhere. So we're starting small. So, so um, look for that. Uh, Nesty finishes and and finishes and renovations. Urethane or epoxy 
um, better. So he wants to know if you're thinking, I, I mean, a lot of that's going to depend on what you're going over, um, where it's going to be inside and outside, mm -hmm. what, um, you know, what type of use is it's going to get. I think the urethane is probably going to be more durable and last longer than the epoxy, but I don't, I mean, I need to know, you know, where we're applying this, what, what's going, what we're going over, what we're trying to bond to, mm -hmm. to say one is better than the other, but they're both really good products. So yes, third coast woodworking and painting, we are going to offer painting classes. So we got to get our building built first, and then we will be letting you know when we'll do classes. Shiner Dryden from Boise, your hey, neighbor, lives by the river, which we're about a mile and a half from the river. Um, would that have anything to do with mildew on the exterior paint? Um, hey, from Boise, I live down here by so, the river. Would that have anything? I mean, you, so you're down by the river, yeah. so um, the humidity is going to be a little bit higher down by yeah. the river. So, um, you know, depending on that, the side of the house, you know, it doesn't get a lot of sun. And then there's the moisture from the river, the humidity and stuff. Yes, I we just painted it. a house down there uh, right um, next to the river not too long ago. The next year had some mold problems and some mildew problems on it. So that could like... Do you use mildecides or anything like that? Um, we have in the past, but higher end paints, paints you're not going to have that problem. Okay, so higher so end paints. The lower end paints that they put on... On there when um, the houses are built new construction um like down a there 100 that kind of stuff I'll even they use lower than that new construction okay you, you're gonna have pro you could have problems with that so thank you Michael um, for sharing get a good repainter to repaint it with a good quality product and you shouldn't have a problem with it no more uh -huh. let's give away um, some shield holders some we'll give to two people we're gonna give away um, one each of the sizes right here some paint product shield holders uh -huh. pick two people pick two people Anesty, oh gosh, what it finish and renovation. We'll We're going to give you some covers. Anesty finish finishing mm -hmm. and renovation. We're going to send you some shield product covers and we'll give to Third Coast Woodworking and Painting. Third Coast Woodworking and Painting. You need to email us your address and we will ship those off to you. We are why build a building because we need to have a building so that we can have a place where we can do classes. So we're going to yeah, so that's a good question. The yeah. Paint Life Academy, we are going to start teaching people um, how to spray with airless sprayers at Academy right here. So we went over to the UK and yeah. I and I taught in Paint Tech Academies. If Which you didn't was know, awesome. it was High amazing. Paint Tech Academy. If they're on, they they put on their own it's two in the morning there <laughs> on the weekends and um, they teach you how to you do airless sprayers and it's hugely popular over there. They're booked for every weekend. Mm -hmm. And I taught one day people came from Belgium, Ireland, um, Scotland, from all over to, yeah. to listen to me. Isle of Man. The Isle of Man to listen to me teach and it was it's huge and now we're bringing that over to here and we're having our own um, academy yeah. when um, combination with Paint Tax Academy so yeah. um, and Journeyman John and I will be teaching right here in our own building it's gonna be set up pretty cool man where we're gonna have windows and doors and everything set up where we can teach you how to spray and how to use huge long extensions and all that fun stuff. So, so please, if you guys are in the Texas area, come down to see us February 21st through 23rd. MM23 is in London. Oh, it's oh, two in the morning, time London. for bed for you. Thanks for being with us. We really appreciate it. We met some great people from London. Yeah. So if we met you, let us know. If, if you're on here and you don't subscribe to our channel, please consider subscribing to our yeah. YouTube channel and click it on the little notification bell. We would love it if you did help support us out. Check us out on Instagram, Idaho Painter, Facebook, The Idaho Painter. Check out our website. Bye, Kenny. It's theidahopainter.com. We're giving away two sprayers right there. You got it. You can't win if you don't enter. Mm -hmm. And then you can purchase from us. We ship them out, our shirts and hats and stickers. So yeah. if you want to buy any of our stickers and stuff, go to Thank our paint you, life store. So, so, um, so one last question. Nelson Brothers Painting says, what's the amount of watts you've seen on your power meter? What's that? So he wants to know, um, that's bicycling. Oh. And so... <laughs> You know, it's in, that's an interesting question because yeah. I was really... I didn't even know what it was. I, I was really into racing and mm -hmm. I won a lot of races, won a lot of crits and stuff. And a lot, all my friends use power meters, but I never used one. Mm -hmm. I, Thank I, you, Donald, for being with us. I had my own um, method of training uh -huh. and, um, and, um, and it was interesting. You, he's a sprinter. He, he won all the sprints. He was a good crit racer, and I'm glad yeah. he's not doing that anymore. So I, I went by what we call perceived, perceived exertion and then um, heart rate. 
So Hi, I Gabriel. used perceived, perceived exertion heart rate. I didn't use power meters. So Mark, I always wondered this. like what power I did generate when I sprinted. A lot. Because um, I was a power lifter and I did squat 720 yeah. pounds. And that's why he's hobbling out and, the thing when you go. <laughs> and so, yeah, years ago I squatted 720 and in my powerlifting career. And then I got on bikes and started racing. Yeah. So, I mean, how much power would You do have a great amount of power. Oh, Hey, family man. Us. He's with us. Yeah. I think... I, He's, you're trying to sell some equipment, so. So, um, Family Man, actually, I don't know if he sold it, but we saw it. he has, I mean, yeah. some equipment. He has, like, what, tw I mean, how many sprayers yeah. did he have for sale? Like, 15 or something mm -hmm. like that? He had, like, this whole thing of sprayers for sale and his van for sale. He's trying to um, liquidate some of his stuff. Go Cleaning look him, some stuff you up. You found him on Facebook, right? Yeah, yeah, so. Is it called Family Man? Oh, he was, can put his thing on here. Name. What type of paint to use on wrought iron fences? We gotta go. Um, so he says, hey guys, will it ever stop raining? What's the best process for new construction? Eggshell, eggshell tan walls, white flat ceilings, white trim and doors. How would you do it? I do Thanks. more grays. Also do every, do you ever use cap spray 115 on trim and doors? So we don't ever, I never use a cap spray on trim and doors because mm -hmm. you're gonna have to refill it too much, um, family man. I just, airless sprayer. Um, way, I mean, you, how many times you'd have to refill that thing unless yeah. you pulled it out of, um, out of a five using, um, not a remote pot, but, um, now I forget, I forget the thing that hooks yeah. onto the thing that draws it, the remote feeding thing. I, I just, I mean, some people do, but you're going to be way faster with an airless sprayer. Mm -hmm. And when new construction, we always, we start by, um, caulking and, um, spackling our tram and then we bondo the tram, sand it, then we prime it with one coat of primer and then we spray two coats top coat on the trim Good night, and then Jeremy. we mask off all the trim and then we spray our walls um if, if the walls are going to be a ceiling is going to be a different color of the walls we're going to spray the walls then we're going to mask off the walls and spray the ceiling in new construction we spray everything bam we're out of there and i do have a videos on our new construction process if you didn't know so third coast woodworking said he already won something so he wanted us to give that away so jerson this one right here. Um, Jerson. Jerson. Pick, he says, pick me. Okay, I'm picking you. You are You're picked. You're going to get two stickers sent to you. So you got to email us. Kiroz. Kiroz. He says, Jerson Kiroz pick, he said, um, pick me. So you so are the winner. You are the winner. So um, Home Improvement How To, if you could let him know to email us his address and I'll get that off. Yeah, if you guys so, didn't know, like, John, I mean, John's not sitting here. Journeyman John, he's always, um, he's got a lot of kids to take care of. And so, a wife. And, and a he wife. And all day. And he, and he works like long hours. So yeah. what he does is he runs home, he jumps on his computer, and he's the one that's sitting there and but, answering, typing questions and answering your questions. And if you want to see him Thursday at noon, Mountain Time, he's on Facebook Live with him. He's usually so, the main character. Thursday, noon, Mountain Time with him. So that's where you'll find him next Thursday. So if you want to see his amazing beard, you got to come check yeah, him out. Yeah, Andrew stumps me with those questions. <laughs> so Family Man put his Facebook name on there, Ben. And so if anybody wants to buy some paint equipment, you can hook up with him. Ben Weffel. Yep. So thank you, everybody, for being with us. And keep on painting. Keep on painting. Keep on painting. You're like in a hurry to get out of here. Oh, we're seven minutes over. We are eight minutes <laughs> over, but we just love to keep answering oh, your questions. Oh, we can just talk forever. So we could talk forever, but we got to go because we got to sleep. Stuff to do. And we got to do stuff because we do have a life. We do. But um, but painting is a big part of our life. It is a big part of our life. And we're thankful and for you guys of this being here. Crowd is a big part of our life. So. Yeah, so but thank anyways, you for each one of we'll you. We'll see you on our next video. Good night. Out.